Hello, we are Geeks Assembled and we've gathered here again today and it's Doctor Who night and this time we are going to be talking about Paradise Towers. So let's jump straight in. Let's go to Susan and Alex with a giant Sylvester McCoy head behind them. Built high for happiness! <laughs> Anyway, um, I I really love this one. Uh, I know that you choose these because they're they're necessarily not the favorites of everybody else. Oh, you, you're saying that they're bad. Well, anyway, I'm I'm enjo I enjoy this one. Um, this one is so memorable that when I'm like dealing with children, like especially toddlers, I'll you know. I'll sit down with some blocks, some bricks, and things like that, and we'll we'll build a castle or build a build a wall or build something else, and and it's always, you know, build high for happiness, and then you know, it's just it's just so memorable and so fun, and it's great that Richard Briers is in it. I really like him. I loved him in in The Good Neighbors. Oh, that was a good show, Felicity Kendall, and him and those guys, and so that was so fun. And I enjoy the I enjoy the parts of it. I like I like how it's split up, and I like how they're always going to go swimming in the swimming pool at the very top, which is really cool because um, not too many people have ended up in the pool in Doctor Who. Except for, you know, Peter Davison and Warriors of the Deep and some other ones. Um, so, but it's not a very, it's not an everyday thing. And that was fun. And, you know, Mel screaming. She does her job. She screams. And she does it really good. So that was fun. And the rest I enjoyed. So here's Alex with his opening thoughts okay um yeah i i guess i misunderstood this story a little bit today when i watched it mm, i didn't realize that they were saying build high for happiness um some of it i've liked and some of it i haven't again this is the 80s version of doctor who where they did try a lot of ideas and they're not all bad unfortunately the execution again is something to be uh, leave to be desired. Um, it's not a bad, the, the theory and the story behind it isn't bad at all. Um, of course, we really don't know who the great architect was. Briars is funny. He's very arch. Unfortunately, when he gets taken over by the evil presence or evil machine or whatever, it does get a little bit too, um, strange, shall we say. Um, it, it is a really good idea in theory. I mean, they have girl gangs, they have colors. They probably wanted to be more modern. Uh, unfortunately, it is still a lot of running down corridors. Uh, they're not necessarily working together until the, <laughs> the, right. the ending of the story. The yeah. Well, no, the machines are kind of creepy, but the problem is they couldn't put any budget. So they do look kind of plastic. The but the de but the design was scary, and the little machine in the pool was a little bit scary, but not a lot. And unfortunately, with Star Wars and all the other cool. big, yeah, I mean they they should have had they should have kept some of the people that did the makeup from the seventies. Fun pool companion. And I think that that would have been more scary. Uh, they have the characters there, unfortunately. Again, it's the budget. If it had a better budget, and if it had been directed a little faster and cut a little faster, I think the story would have been funnier. But again, I get the point. I get Sylvester's point. I know why they wrote the Doctor the way they did in this story. And he's right. I mean, it's basically, it may be a building of 200-odd floors or whatever, 160 floors. And most buildings only go up to 110, if that. And not many, thank goodness. Uh, wouldn't be practical, probably, and too expensive. Uh, so except for Dubai, I think that's the only place in the world where they have 
you know, 200 floors or whatever. Do they have any buildings in England that are over 100 floors in, in real life? In reality, I should say. Anyway, I'll come back to that. Well, yeah, um, of course you do. You do? Okay. Yeah. I didn't see any. I didn't see any that I could find on the internet. But you don't have anything that's two hundred floors or whatever, right? I don't know. Okay. Maybe I don't know. That that yeah. that building in Dubai is the tallest in the world. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, but doctor, the doctor's right in the sense that nobody's really working together. They're pretty much united for three stories and basically despising one another which is very weird when you're in one building and you can't leave. That's a very unhealthy behavior and attitude. And I think that's why I think that's why uh, uh, that might be one of the lessons of this story is the fact that they probably could have changed things had they worked together before the doctor arrived. Uh, but again, that's the other part about human nature, too, is when you finally face a threat and you might die, you might even work with people that you originally don't want to, to survive. And of course, that's the other irony. I, I don't know if this story is making fun of itself, making fun of cities, making fun of a building that acts like a city. I'm not quite sure. But again, it's a, it's a good concept. It's just the execution and the budget wasn't there. Uh, and of course, there are better Sylvester McCoy stories. Uh, greatest Show in the Galaxy, Survi Survival. I'm saying that wrong right now. Uh, the last season of, of McCoy is actually better than the first two seasons, and certainly looks a lot better and is more watchable, easier to watch. Um, but again, uh, these were the days when there was what? 10, 15, 20 stories, something like that, uh, per season, per series, as they say. And so they probably had to rush a few things. Well, it might have been 15, I think. I think maybe 12 or 15 stories a season. But they were also stretched between four episodes as well. Uh, so that also might have hurt the budget as well, as opposed to coming up with 10 stories and then really – like they do now, for better or for worse. Uh, and I was making fun of the fact that McCoy's coat looks a lot like Whitaker's coat from the new version of it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, McCoy is actually a good actor. He is actually a good doctor. It's just it takes too long between three seasons to get the stories nice and, and tight and filmed where they're really visually appealing and the music isn't extremely loud. I understand they changed the music guy from the 60s and the 80s to the late 80s, but unfortunately, that's another thing I don't like about McCoy. I don't know why they changed the logo. It looks like a soda can type of thing. I don't know why they made his face silver. I don't know why they tried a lot. They tried a lot of ideas that were good, but they, but they didn't have the budget for it, so. But this isn't a bad story. Theoretically, and in terms of human nature, it's actually a very smart story. But it's just the execution of it that, that isn't that great. All right, thanks for that, Alex. Let's go to, let's go to Beef Dad, see what Beef Dad thinks. Well, I enjoyed this. Um, I remember when it came out, and. Uh, I watched every episode and I enjoyed it then. I've re rewatched it and really enjoyed it again. Um, yeah, Sylvester McCoy, I think he's great in this. Um, Bonnie Langford, yep, yeah, yeah, famous for her screams. Um, whereas Susan for, with the first Doctor was famous for f tripping over and hurting her ankle. Um, but Bonnie Langford got the name as she's the Doctor Screamer. Um, Richard Bryars playing the chief caretaker. Yeah, superb job. And when, of course, he is taken over by um, the great architect, um, that that is just superb. And his complete change of character, he did it so well. 
Um, and of course, nobody's mentioned the residents, um, mostly old ladies. Um, Elizabeth Spriggs and Brenda Bruce living together. I, you know, that, that, what a combination that was. Um, both absolute superb actresses. And of course, after they've died and they've been pulled through the um, waste disposal, um, their neighbour, Judy Maddie, played by Judy Cornwall, um, who also was another great actress. Um, she goes to the chief caretaker and he goes down to the basement to visit the great architect who has been basically trapped in a machine and uh, he's been an architect all over space and uh, he's been trapped in this machine because his idea was he would build these beautiful buildings but didn't want people in them because people having people in them made them messy and so he programmed the cleaners to kill people and bring them down and basically um, their energy would feed him and uh, yeah it, it, as I say they did this wonderful bit where he takes over uh, where the great architect takes over the chief caretaker <coughs> but one of the other things that nobody's mentioned is at the end of every episode there was a brilliant cliffhanger uh, especially with the doctor with the cleaner's claw around his neck that was just superb but uh yeah the the gangs yeah they were fun i thought they weren't very good at it they were just um sort of toughy girls a little bunch of toughy girls um and of course you had the hero um pex played by Howard Cook, and he was really very, very good. He'd escaped being part of the war because he didn't want to be part of the war, but he tried to protect people in Paradise Towers, and he also protected Mel when she was trying to find her way through and find her way up to the pool because that is where she had agreed to meet the doctor and yeah and uh, uh, when it came down to it at the very end he dies killing the great architect and the chief caretaker who is who are both both one person now and uh, the last scenes uh, are all the um all the gangs uh, who had taken used to take the mickey out of him but it was all the gangs the caretakers all the residents all um basically saying thank you to the hero uh yeah so yeah i really enjoyed it um <coughs> and sylvester mccoy he's good every time he really is. Um, I got to meet him last last year at Time Lash, and he and I had a lot of fun together. And he doesn't mind a drink, <laughs> which is rather good. And uh, yeah, he's really, really nice, really nice guy. Speaking of drink, let's go to Lee. Yeah. Hold on. <sighs> <laughs> Oh yeah, yes. so I've had uh, I've had many of Yeah, Lee, Lee never drinks. He never never touches a drop. I've, I've had many a drink with Sylvester McCoy at three o'clock in the morning in the hotel bar. Um, you have? I have. Yeah. Oh, beat that beef, Dad. Back in you know back in the old <laughs> <laughs> circuit. Um, 
<laughs> this this one is is a difficult one for me. It, it's fifty fifty for me. This one. There's good things. There's bad things about this. Um, I like the idea of the high rise. It's high rise flats um, being sort of being made out to be the best thing ever built, and then they go into disrepair and all like that. And that's what happened. This it was it was a statement of what was going back on in the 1980s of these high rise block you know, these flats. You know, graffiti everywhere, gangs hanging about. Uh, so it was that sort of statement, and I, I, I like that idea. Um, and also, there being the the gang, you know, the Kangs, the Reds, the Blues. Yes, that used to happen, but I, the the Kangs didn't work for me. I'm sorry, it just annoyed me. It really did annoy me. Um, but the cast in this is absolutely brilliant. Richard Bryars, the chief caretaker. He's he, he had a lot of stick about his portrayal of the chief caretaker and, and the great architect. But you've got to realise he was playing the ch uh, chief caretaker as a comedic part, which he really did well. And when he's he was possessed by Cronagnon, um, he did it so well. The way he moved his body, someone else was in his body getting used to where he was moving and talking. That was so good. Um, and then you have Clav Merrison as the uh, deputy chief caretaker um been in a few of dot who's you know previously brilliantly brilliantly done as comedic and then as as beef i said the residents uh brenda bruce judy cornwell but uh elizabeth spriggs um i absolutely loved uh elizabeth spriggs one of my all-time favorite actresses she's you know i mean no longer with us well most of these actress actors and actresses are no longer with us but elizabeth spriggs was tabby you know anything she was in i always used to watch because i just loved that actress yeah um and then um what else did we have uh, mel yeah it was the way she was written and that is the problem with, with mel they didn't know how to write a companion then it's oh you're a companion scream 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 and scream and it was not just mel they used to do that for perry you know what I mean? It, it, it was lazy writing, in my opinion. But, um, also, we had, um, as it's been mentioned, Pex. Very, very miscast. Um, nothing against the actor, but for me personally, if you're going to be the hero looking after this block of, you know, the block of flats to make out, you know, Pex. It says that it says it that you've got to be big and muscly, and it would have worked a lot better if they had someone who was well built in that you know in the physique side to be somebody that. Somebody like me, somebody like myself, someone <laughs> like Lou Ferrigno. You need someone bigger to have the name Pex and to be yeah. the. To be the um, joke of all the. You just, come on, come on, Lee. But, but what have you, you been the butt of the joke? Eye candy. No, no, that's what I'm saying. That would that would have worked a lot better if it was a big, muscly actor. Viewers ignore him. It's just one of his fantasies. He, no, he, he just no, wants a bit of eye candy. It would have been made fun of if it had been a real big, muscular guy. <laughs> no, it would have done because it, it would have intimidated the... him, them. No, no, it, because he it, it was it was still a coward if he was still a big muscly guy, but it would have been a lot better. It, it would have worked a lot better for me. Yeah, I agree with that, yeah. If the, the guy who played Pex was bigger built, then it, it would have been better. Um, nothing against, I say, nothing against the actor. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, um, so say, the Kangs, uh, even the cleaners, what a terrible design. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, cliffhangers were good with the, the claw around the doctor's throat, but he had to put his throat in the claw. Um, yeah, yeah. It, uh, wow. See, th this is the other thing because then you start wondering if they if they should have had ten more minutes of editing. It's it's just that it, it until the last episode, it just sort of. It comes up as a little coin. Yeah, but the problem is with that, Alex. Yeah. Doctor right. Who's had these robots like this so many times where yeah. they're meant to be a threat, 
but basically the the well, actors have to throw themselves into the yeah. robot's arms yeah. to get captured yeah. or try to be killed yeah, so many that, times see that that's the other problem with this they episode. just they just don't learn it back then they just didn't learn yeah the um the funny thing is the residents are actually scarier than the cleaners are. Oh yeah, was, my god, yeah, it, yeah. It's almost like mm, are, are, you know, are you in a very Those two you know, women. Uh, yes. <laughs> you know, is it arsenic or old lace or are they going to start, you know, you you finish your tea and then they're going to start stabbing you like your Swiss cheese. So they they were actually scarier than the machines were. That that's the problem. Yeah, but as, as I said, the de the design of the the cleaner uh, that was a terrible design. Uh, the design of the uh, the robot in the pool awful. Um, the set design, uh, yeah, it's a studio bound story. Um, you can tell it is, but it works. I think the the, the design of it does work because mm. it's down. It, you know, it's not like it used to be. Uh, you know, there's graffiti everywhere. But it works like that. But they say for me, the thing what led for me for me was the Kangs. It's so annoying. Um, it really did annoy me. But the portrayal, I say Richard Briers, chief caretaker, really, really did it for me. Uh, I Richard Briers is brilliant, um, and I don't agree with all the stick he got. He had to defend himself when he was still alive. He had to defend himself for his portrayal of this, and I, I don't agree why he should have done that. Um, Doctor Who's always had over-the-top um, villains, you know. Yeah, but this is it. But he, he, his, the two parts he played was totally different from one to the other, and he was possessed, and you could say, "Wow, it was spooky." Oh, he was brilliant. Yeah, he was brilliant. Um, yeah. That's <laughs> nothing. But did you notice that his mustache changed? Yeah. yeah, I noticed that too. Let me let me ask a question. If they could have worked a little harder in the story of saying, you know, and I don't think they really, unless I missed it, I don't think they said anything like they've been there for 20 years or 50 years or whatever. Maybe if they had said something like that, it would have had more context. If you well, yeah, but also, I mean. I'm glad you brought that up because Chief Caretaker was feeding the great architect. He didn't know it was the great architect. So why was he doing it? Uh, there was no reason given for why he was doing that. And the great architect was mostly in Paradise Towers well before the chief caretaker was. Yeah. Uh, so there's a bit of, you know, a bit of bad writing there, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, there were places where... Because it was in the book, there. Lee. It was in the little book of rules. Okay. Yeah, it was in the guidebook that they made a joke about, you know, you have to take a break for 15 minutes or whatever. Well, I mean, I did read the novelization of Paradise Towers, and they did actually convey more of a, you know, that that's the other thing that people don't realize, is that if the building's so high, they might have everything included, or they might, you know, eventually convince people not to go outside, as we saw from the resis eating other people that were, you know, visiting them for tea. They couldn't, yeah, they couldn't just, you know, go outside or whatever. So I don't know if in the TV version they decided not to emphasize kind of the boredom, which I think they tried to do with Pex, but they just didn't direct him correctly to sort of, because yeah, everybody's scared of something. It doesn't matter if you're two feet tall or 10 feet tall, you are scared of something. But the problem is the way that he was directed in the story sort of gives a cringy sort of, you know, and then it emphasizes more that he's not, you know, as, as threatening as he should be. Not that he was in real life, but the problem is he didn't even play the character, you know, as well as it could have been directed where he would have been more imposing, not just in the physical, but in his, personality and i think that's the again that's the issue with a lot of doctor who stories is that the direction and the editing isn't the best to yeah no the editing to, isn't right with a lot of classic who episodes yeah. i agree with that yeah so is the book a lot different then is it alex uh yeah i mean it's more it's more 
how can I say it's more practical. It it does give sort of an image of they've kind of given up. The whole world is that building, which yeah. they sort of convey in the story, but they don't really convey that, you know, not only does, I mean, they, they emphasize that everybody despises each other. Okay. <laughs> and that might be realistic, but they didn't convey the, the passage of time, or maybe they're doing the same thing constantly. So they don't notice how many years they're wasting and all, you know what I mean? You, you understand what I'm, what I'm getting at? Is that maybe no. they didn't convey, they didn't convey enough of human nature. They, they did it for the point of the story, but they didn't do it where you could say, okay, here's why they invented the, the gangs. Because even Sylvester McCoy said, you know, where's the boys, which they kind of glossed over, or they kind of mm -hmm. said, oh, that's the caretakers, or maybe it's the caretakers. And I don't know if they wanted people to read into that. Okay, here, here we're explaining the society. Not that they really did. But again, it's 25 minutes too. So that's the other, that's the other issue that they don't really get everything firing on all cylinders until the last episode, you know, the fourth episode anyway. I think the problem with this story is it's a good concept and it's a good idea, but it just falls in the same mistakes as a lot of classic who does. It's the same mistakes. Like, look at the robots, you know, the caretakers. The, you know, again, it's with them stupid designed robots that you just have to throw yourself in front of. It's like um, Colony in Space with John Pertwee when those things are coming towards him. And he literally can just step aside and completely avoid them but he has to throw himself in the middle of them to get captured. It's the, it's the same mistakes in this story. So the story could have been improved if the robots were actually better, but then the story still has issues, in my opinion. And one of them is Mel, in a way, because... Mel is Mel's all, Mel throughout the series was badly written. Just the screaming companion, like Lee says, it's just absolutely lazy. Come on, you can think of better things to do with her. I mean, Bonnie Lamford, she's a great actress. You know, she's a great actress. You know, what's any standards? And thank God, Big Finish is giving her good scripts to do. Yeah, so that's the thing, but. Even without Big Finish, she's showing how good of an actress she is yeah, yeah. in EastEnders. If you've ever seen her in EastEnders, she's absolutely brilliant. Well, isn't it true, guys, that unfortunately with when she was in Trial of the Time Lord, she actually had more character development. So it's like they went backwards. Yeah. Or for the purposes of the story, they made her, because I was even saying to Susan, that in the problem too in this story is one minute she's 13, next minute she's 25, next minute she's 30. Whereas yeah, when she that, was yeah. with Colin Baker, it was determined. She was a computer programmer. She wanted to be active. That's why they were on the exercise bike and, and all that. So the funny thing is with the sixth doctor, she was actually a more defined companion than with the seventh. It doesn't make any sense. It's like and they couldn't make up their mind, you know? And with Sylvester McCoy, obviously here, this, this isn't yet his doctor. This isn't yet his doctor. So he's not at his best in this story because it's so early on. It's in his first season. Um, and he does get a lot better. And he does get a lot better stories. Uh, the, the chief caretaker... To, he's brilliant. He is absolutely brilliant in this story. Um, I don't understand why people don't like camp and OTT villains. I love them. Bring them on. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with them? I think he livens up the story. He livens it up. He makes it more enjoyable when he's on when he's on the screen. You think, all oh, right, now 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 we're livening up here because I don't like the the rest of the characters. 
yes, I like the old ladies and you got the woman off keeping up appearances. But Pex, yeah, I agree. Pex is a bit dull, I think. Um, but, you know, the chief caretaker, he really livens it up. And it, he's just brilliant. I don't care what anybody says. I like over-the-top uh, villains. <laughs> I mean, I like Disney villains. I mean, they're over the top. <laughs> you know, I love evil queens and everything like that. Speaking of evil or over the top villains, we just lost Stephen Thorne this week. Yeah, we did. Yeah, from yeah. you know, Omega. Yeah, so when this when this actually goes out, it probably be two years ago. So um, this is the oh, two year anniversary. Very funny. Yeah. <laughs> Lee gets things out of the out of the drive faster than that. Oh, you silly. Yeah, Lee might. Lee, yes, Lee might. <laughs> it, <laughs> what you, what's he got his mouth open for now? That's not what I meant. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, let's go on to favorite moments before we descend into chaos. Uh, let's go to Beef Dad. I love the moment where um, Tabby and Tilda they hear the noise in the noise in the waste disposal system, and then this metal claw comes up and drags them through into it and kills them. Um, but Pex arrives and gets there in time to save Mel. Uh, I I like that. Um, the actual, the actual conversion of Richard Briars to the great art to Carl Agnon, I think it's, it's it's rather good. It's done in a sort of like a sort of tin dustbin with holes in it, but um, yeah, none of the flash. Um, glass stuff that you would normally have got uh, that actually worked quite well for me. Um, the robotic killer crab in the swimming pool, that amused me. That really did amuse me. And um, yeah, there was a, there was a member there, I don't know if she was a member of one of the Kangs, um, called, um, what was it, what was her name, um, Binliner, no, Fire Escape, there was one called Binliner, one called Fire Escape, um, of course, Fire Escape, she was married to, um, a companion of the Doctor. She was married to Mark Strickson. Um, and uh, yeah, it's the, the 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 change in um, the caretaker to the possessed caretaker, possessed by the um, Possessed by Crow Agnon, that was just superbly done by Richard Briars. I must admit, I I did laugh at the moustache because I mean, as as the um, as the uh, as the chief caretaker, he had a Hitler moustache, and then all of a sudden, when he's possessed, it's a full top lip moustache, which that amused me. That amused me. I don't know how them how we managed to do that and grow it so quickly. That was just very impressive. Uh, but those are my favourites. Thank you, Beef Dad. Let's go to Alex and Susan. See what their favourite moments are. Okay, my favourite moment is uh, Mel swimming in the swimming pool and playing with the little yellow guy, the little yellow submarine in there. That was fun. Um, I love the the 
the Kangs, uh, you know, Red Kangs are best and Blue Kangs are best. I love that. That was kind of cute and fun. And of course, these ladies weren't educated. They'd been expelled from their planet and lived in this edifice and didn't go to school and didn't go, you know. So it, their language was pretty rubbish. But, you know, people who aren't educated, their language is pretty rubbish. So, you know, they did, the writers did that okay. And the other thing that was really cool was the, um, I, I enjoyed the, the, um, well, I can't, it's not, the noble sacrifice, Peck's noble sacrifice was pretty amazing considering he was so afraid. And I don't think he would have been better as a Lou Ferrigno type dude. I think he was just fine because a lot of the, the more wiry people can be, you know, super, super athletic at some point anyway. Um, and uh, let's see, the, the other thing that was noteworthy about it, well, I'll get to that later. Here's Alex. Um, well, also, uh, it may make a difference. Um, I was trying to do a little bit of research on the writer. The writer also did the better story, the greatest show in the galaxy. But again, Doctor Who doesn't have a lot of budget, never really has. Uh, also, the original writer was more, did more plays than television shows when this was filmed. So maybe that's the other, because it's a play, it actually is pretty good as a TV show. Mm, it's, it's a little, yeah, it's, it's the fact that it doesn't look that impressive, even with the disarray, the, the, um, the cleaners, the, the machines with the claws. And unfortunately, if you watch too closely, which you can now because everything's on tablet and smartphone and all that, it, it's not scary. It, that's the problem. And then there's too many minutes where they're saying, you know, this catchphrase or trying to make a catchphrase out of it or something like that. And it sort of hurts the story just a little bit. Uh, I like the idea. I like the concept. The resis are actually scary. Uh, the caretakers, no, they're not scary. And I understand this is England and they want to put in, you know, sarcasm. Alex, they just look like plastic toys, didn't they? Unfortunately, yeah. They look like plastic toys. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's what I mean, though. If, if this was a play, they probably did it right. But as a TV show, no. It needed, it needed something tighter. It needed tighter editing, I think. Um, Alex, so, yeah. as I always say, tighter the better. Anyway. The, um, so, like I said, it, it's wonderful in theory. And I like the fact that they're showing that they despise each other. But I didn't think that they went into the right detail about the boredom, the loss of time, the fact that everybody's kind of trapped there, and has made and they've made themselves be trapped there as well. So I think that's what the doctor was trying to say about you know we're not working together, we're not you know, I mean they're not improving, they're not growing. No nobody in that building is really going anywhere until they all you know, work together and, and finally, you know, give credit to Pex and, and for his sacrifice and, no, and no, stop, no. okay, and stop, you know, fighting each other. And so that part they did well, but again, you have to wait until the fourth episode. That, that's the, I think that's the issue, is that I think they were filming a play and tried to turn it into a TV show as opposed to, take the best parts of the play, speed it up a little bit, because when you're watching TV, you want things to be, and especially now, where everything is a jump cut and, you know, overhead and all that, you know, that this would come over as very, very slow, unfortunately. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And did it really need to be four parts? I don't think so. Uh, it, it, yeah, you're right, Alex, it could... It would work better as a play, really. You can see it as a play, 
because it's all very simple sets and things like that. Um, let's go to Lee. Uh, yeah. Um, it's a, Richard Briers for me made made this story. Um, his portrayal of the chief caretaker being being so so comedic against Sylvester McCoy's um, bending of the rules of the rule book. Is you know it's just brilliant. Um, and one of the, the scenes where uh, the chief caretaker has been led into Conagron's uh, domain before he gets possessed is so good. Uh, you know, because the chief, care, t- chief caretaker doesn't realise what is actually going on. You know, you know, daddy, daddy's been feeding you all these t- years. Daddy's been doing this for you. What, why, what are you doing this for? Um, so well played. Um, and then, and then they say when when he's possessed, that is just an amazing, amazing performance. Are you afraid? When he puts his shoulder on Pex, that is just so good and eerie. Um, yeah, Sylvester. Yeah, it's early days for for Sylvester. Um, his first season is um, it's one of those, isn't it? It's yeah, it's like that, give or take. Um, but as his perform- performance, you can see where he's going. Um, I agree with what, well, I started with the Mel thing, yeah. Um, this, for me, would have worked better as an, just an audio. You wouldn't have to put up the cleaners for a start. Um, you, you imagine your own cleaners. But, yeah, it's there's so, there's so many good, good things about it. And then, then there's so many bad things about this. Uh, I can't wait for the scoring on this one. Um, you know what I mean? Um, and Mel, yeah, we all know about Mel. Good, a good companion, badly written. Um, and then this, this was supposedly a high tech Paradise Towers, you know, um, resort high. And you look at the you look at the swimming pool. And you think, is this high tech? It's <laughs> plastic chairs, probably for the eighties. You no, know, but yeah, no, no. But this was set in the future. Yeah, but it's filmed in the eighties. No, but yeah, but this was supposed to be in the future. If you, I know, t- but they never get future stuff right. I know. <laughs> I mean, just I mean, the, 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 none of nothing. You know, nothing was you know ugly about it it wasn't like oh my god this is the most crap furniture ever it was decent uh, ex- <laughs> I, don't know. I, I don't think i'd and want that, to sell and them that them. Sort, those sorts of furnitures don't change much okay well no, no, but yeah but, yeah my favorite moments are richard Briers um when he gets possessed yeah no yeah I, no even before that is the way is the portrayal of the uh, chief caretaker and also um, Elizabeth Spriggs and, and Brenda Bruce. Is it Brenda Bruce? Cameron, yeah, Brenda Bruce as as the as the cannibal reses, just played for com- comedy effect. But they're creepy. They, yeah, that's what I mean. They are creepy. Comedy can yeah. be creepy. Yeah, they um, really are creepy. It works, yeah. it works so well. Um, yeah, I understand editing has got a fault here, but also the writing has got a fault here. Um, but then again, if this is one of, if we think this is one of Sylvester's worst, then it's, it's not as bad as other eras of the show have had, you know, it's not as bad as some other. I've always always said. Every era, every season of Doctor Who has got its clunkers or clinkers, yeah. what I call. And you could get two or, th- if you're lucky, three per season where you think, what? what? But I'm trying to think, is this really Sylvester McCoy's worst? Does anybody actually think this is his worst? Because I don't. Um, I don't know what his worst is. I'm trying to work, work out DVD which one's the worst. Trouble is, you could say worst, but I could actually be honest and say I would never ever put a zero on any. Oh. I could go one, but I could never, never, never say, you know, zero. Okay. 
Hang on. On what? On what? Just a minute. On, on what? On what? On any, Put a zero on, on what? Any uh, Doctor Who story. I could never go... You've got to give a mark. I could go from one to four, but I could never... Oh, say so it. Series 11 is at least getting a one, folks. Uh, <laughs> you didn't see it. No, that's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> you heard it here. No, 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 no. Principles and standards. Um, okay, now some people have said that Time in the Rani is horrible. No, people do you know what? I quite, I, I quite like that one. Delta and the Bannerman. Yeah. Delta and the Bannerman are awful. I like that one. Uh, Dragonfire could have been awful. With the literal cliffhanger, the literal cliffhanger. Yeah, Dragonfire is a weird one because yeah. there's elements that I like. Right. But there's elements that just don't gel together. Like Sylvester McCoy's the only one sliding across the set being affected by the ice and everybody else is just walking normally. Right. And the dragon looks a bit, you know, crap, to be honest. <laughs> well, but like I said, the problem is... It's good for literal... what, I think it's good for the time because yeah. for the time, it, it's not a bad dragon, but it just doesn't, just doesn't work, I don't think. Well, again, you know, this is why certain eras of Doctor Who are held in more regard than others. Because the, you can see what they were trying to do with McCoy, but mm. they didn't have the same production team as, you know, Tom Baker or John Pertwee, where it really yeah. would have looked good. You know what I mean? It really would have been, the way they directed it, it really would have been scary. Not until you get to, you know, Greatest Show in the Galaxy and Ghost Light oh, amazing. And Bible. Yeah where yeah. it really is scary. I mean, I've shown survival to people that don't even like British TV shows and they love survival, you know, survival. So, you know, so that, that's the thing. I think it's the way they filmed it. It's the way they directed it. It's the way they edited it. That, that it, you know, because it's true. It, it matters. It does. See, I think when you look at this story and you think of other Sylvester McCoy stories, like he has some really amazing stories that even though this isn't one of the worst ever, it's yeah. definitely one of the worst of his era. Oh. It's definitely in the bottom, I would say, four. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that the story itself, that the episode itself is awful, because I think there is, yeah. you, you can enjoy it. Well, and I mean, it's got good elements to it. Yeah, I mean, I know that a lot of a people... lot about Sylvester McCoy's era, to be honest. Yeah, that it's not that he doesn't have many awful episodes. In well, my I, opinion, I know a lot of people that like Curse of Fenric and Ghostlight as well. Yeah, I like them. There you go. Curse of Fenric's amazing. Ghostlight's brilliant. Oh. Ace is amazing in that. Um, and Sylvester McCoy is. This is why I was saying I would never score anything a zero. Because mm. it's nothing a Doctor Who is worth a zero. Colony in Space was well, pretty bad. Yeah, but, no, yeah, but it was not and a zero. Underworld was pretty bad. It's not a zero. Cause I can think of other stories that are pretty time, bad. Time yes. time. <laughs> yeah, but the oh story. my God. That's a zero. You hit the nail on the head. That is a zero. End of. Let's go on. Every story is still some good element what can save it. Not really. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Well, he's just mentioned time flight. No, I mentioned time flight. Yes, exactly. There's nothing to save time flight. Uh, yeah, but again, the execution yeah. wasn't wait, great. Wait, wait. Uh, except the execution for the, and the story. Ex, <laughs> except for the fact that it was about a Concord and two Concord. Yeah, I, well, I don't care. Well, I do. <laughs> and I'm an anorak about airplanes. Okay. Are you? Well, you'll, well here's yeah. another. Here's yeah. another story. It's no wonder Concord That's went out of business after this episode. We're well, actually story. Yeah, yeah well, but it's no wonder Concord went out of business. Okay, it's all because well, of time flight. That's well, what it, Time Flight did so much damage to their reputation. Nissa, yeah, Nissa was screaming in that one a lot as well. Nissa was screaming a lot. Yeah, go ahead. It crashed a whole anyway. company. Yeah. Well, anyways, Ali, what's your favourite moment? The caretaker. And when the caretaker gets possessed. Exactly. I like, I like, I like, I like the two old women, you know, the one from um, Keep Her Appearances as well, you know. Jodie Cornwall. 
Yeah, she's great. Oh, she's great in everything. Oh, she's amazing. Well, uh, you just reminded me now, that really did make me laugh. Where this, you know, they were all coming together. We said, we're going we're gonna to beat the great architects. Yeah. The, and the, the res is, what we'll do, we'll, we'll knit tablecloths of her over the robots. <laughs> I'm sorry, how, how long is it going to take to knit tablecloths? <laughs> So bad writing. Sorry. It was no, there were there was elements of bad writing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go to final say and score. Let's start off with beef dad since we've been going that way around all night. Well, you what, what you have to remember is that the guy who wrote this um, was uh, this was his first writing of Doctor Who. Um, he was pulled in at the very last moment to write this by um, the producer. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it gets mm, eight and a half from me. Oh, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to Alex and Susan. I was expecting lower than that, actually. Well, I will give it an eight, uh, eight king haircuts out of ten. <laughs> and I have to mention this uh, because um, the Kangs had hair that was so, so tall. So they, they didn't just tease their hair. They made it mad. <laughs> I, I loved that about it i thought that that was really cool it was very 80s oh my gosh it was so 80s i think that type of hair would suit you and alex um thank you i will take that under consideration yeah especially alex he he, he would look good with his fro but yeah. there is no way that he will let his hair grow long any longer can I just say, Sylvester McCoy's eyes are really creeping me out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they really are quite scary, aren't they? See, see that? It's very effective. Uh, it is yeah. effective. It, it's almost hypnotizing. Okay. I've just been staring at them all night. Yeah. It's, um, again... We have so, been here all night, haven't we? Yeah, Sylvester McCoy <laughs> is actually a very good actor, and he is given a lot with Doctor Who, except for the direction, the editing, and the music. Until yeah. his final season, it has Ghost Light, Curse of Fenwick, uh, Greatest Show in the Galaxy is the year after, That's and Survival. Well, I don't like Battlefield. But I know a lot of people... I like Battlefield. Do. Oh, remember... I know, I know a lot of people that do. And again, this is a small cult show. Now again, it's gotten big again. Um, there was a lot there was a lot of good ideas in here it's just the execution it should have been directed better it should have looked more frightening yeah they, they should have cut down actually on some of the dialogue they didn't say how much time had passed and whether everybody was really trapped in that building to explain some of their behavior because it was claustrophobic and they didn't really convey that that's what they should have conveyed mm -hmm. And this was better as a play than as a TV show. That said, I'll give it a seven. It's too bad we can't review like Survival or, or Ghost Light or, we'll you know, Greatest Show in the Galaxy. We'll that was better. That, that was done better, much better. We will, we will, we will get there. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's funny. And also, too, I mean, again, uh, you know, remember, this is not only the longest science fiction franchise in the world but they also do more with a lot less you know this is not the air this is not doctor who was never a million dollars an episode i don't know if it is now but it, it definitely wasn't back then hold on a minute we do more with a lot less is it that geeks assembled yeah that well but we're not on tv we're on and we don't have a million pound per cast <laughs> true true <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, Doctor Who is a million pound per episode. Now it is. Yeah, now it is. But you've got to remember, prices are different. So it's basically probably just got the same budget as it did back then because of inflation. So 
it's probably the same it's probably the same really isn't it um let's go let's go to lee because we have to oh um yeah I, I'm, I'm torn on this one um i love the casting apart from pex uh, richard Breyer steals it from me uh yeah mccoy is a brilliant actor um he got a lot of stick for his portrayal but it's not his portrayal it's his early seasons was not well written um mm. which we could say about colin baker's as well um and a few of peter davison's um and tom baker and tom baker's yeah um well every season really every 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 doctor has every bad doctor. episodes it's as simple as that uh, i'm giving it an eight because I do, I do like, I do like the concept of it, and and what they're trying to say back then, what they was trying to say, and there's just a few things what let me down on it. But the acting, you know, Richard Bryars and and the Reses and all like that, just brilliant. So yeah, it gets an eight from me. You see, I can't give it an eight or anything like that because then I think how much better Sylvester McCoy gets how much better Ace is, how much better the writing gets. I mean, if you look at yeah, Remembrance of the Daleks. Yeah, but, we're, yeah, but we're only judging this story, not... No, no, you, I'm afraid you have got to judge them by the rest of the stories. I think you do have to go, right, where does this fit into right. the rest of his stories? Give it, give it a five and get it over with. Wow, you, you actually predicted what I was going to give it, a five. <laughs> no, I was going to go straight down the middle. Straight down the middle. It's a good story. It's ninja. I like elements of it. And there's elements that I don't like. And like I said, uh, Ace is far better than Mel. Sylvester McCoy gets so much better. The writing gets so much better. Alex has mentioned loads of better stories than this that I would give an eight, nine, and even a 10 for some of McCoy's stories. That This doesn't come near those, but that doesn't mean this is as bad as Time Flight or this is as bad as um, Colony in Space or this is as bad as Underworld. No, Th this kind of is in the middle between awful and elements that are really great and it kind of fits in the middle so i think five is a fair score considering that you get much better from mccoy <laughs> i can i just can't wait for the next one we do next month which will be happening oh which one's that gonna be well i haven't decided yet maybe a missing one we do not know what have we done the Doctor Who movie? No. N no, but we, we're going to... We, we should do that next. Oh, yeah. we don't do New Who. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I don't think... I said that, that on behalf of Lee, by the way. Oh, let's do Paul McGann next. <laughs> uh, no, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do Hartnell because that's Beef Dad's favourite Doctor. Fun. All right, all right. The, the wonderful fandom debate. And would you go against Beef Dad? No. Would you want to disappoint Beef Dad? No. There we go. You muted Beef Dad. When will you be doing it? What? In about, uh, roughly, roughly a month onwards. That could be difficult. Yeah, like yep. yeah, it usually is. But <laughs> it's the first. It's the first weekend of every month. Yeah. Well, my. My problem is um, I should be go moving back to England at the beginning of July. So, well, we could we could delay it by a week or so. So yeah, so we might so we do Paul McGann next then and keep or, Susan. Or, or, or we could do Paul McGann and then 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 William Hartnell. Yeah. Well, here's an idea. How about doing an overview of New Who, Sands Whitaker? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's like absolutely not. Don't mention Whitaker to him. 
<laughs> well, the, the, the Doctor Who magazine, when they interviewed me, asked me what I thought about Jodie Whittaker. Okay. And I said, she's really beginning to turn it into her role. Yeah. Uh, like any other, like any other Doctor, the first few episodes yeah, are judge. very, very difficult for the new Doctor to actually take over the role and to get it. And she is getting there. She definitely is getting there. So yeah. do you think that if she... Oh, God. Still, no. <sighs> okay, I mean, so I, I like... Yeah. Look, look, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, every good I, Doctor... Is for their generation, yeah. And Jody is for this generation. Yeah. We're all and, and so I mean, Mr. McCoy during this during Paradise Towers was for his generation. Yeah, it, Tom Baker was for his generation, just like um, John Pertwee was. It, that, that's how it is. Jody is for this generation, and I really like Jody. Actually, I thought she did a great job, and I really liked Series Eleven. Well, here, here's I really another. enjoyed series 11. Yeah. Is it the best? Yeah. What, what you've got to remember is you've already reviewed Jodie anyway, so what's the point? We're not on about reviewing Jodie. Yes. Yes, you were. <laughs> when? When? Who said that? Who? <laughs> Alex. What, what, Alex what, said what, about what? reviewing you, who? Yeah. Well, here's the thing, yeah. too, that, that maybe, <laughs> maybe... I've done that. Yeah. Maybe, the, maybe that's the other issue with Doctor Who, is that it takes the production team and the writers a year before they can finally settle into the character of the Doctor. Okay. Um, Look, Doctor Who is not an easy show to write, and it's probably not an easy show to direct or even act for really because Doctor Who is quite unique as a television show and it's definitely not something British TV really is used to making because we don't have many sci-fi shows no, uh, no matter fantasy sci-fi shows we just don't have many in Britain I mean America have always done a good few but that's they... cause you, you had the best one ever already I know yeah Blake 7 yeah very funny yeah, um, that's Tribal. really last, doesn't it? You can watch that on BBC One right now. And it, and it, <laughs> yeah. Yep, and it's Game of Thrones before it was Game of Thrones. <laughs> Anyways, over to you, Alex. Just Let's with a lower budget. Let's go. Let's <laughs> find you. Yes, anyway, so I'd like to thank everybody here for joining me. I'd like to thank you for watching. Tell us below what you made of Paradise Towers. Uh, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this if you if you're that lonely in your life like we are. Uh, look after yourself. Take care, and we will see you next time. <laughs>